can I ask you about chafer grubs and leather jacket control? Um, what would you recommend greenkeepers do now that the preventative measures for that have been lost? I think the first thing for me is that actually determine what the problem is. Mm -hmm. Because certainly with leather jackets and chafers, the turf environment can actually carry quite a high loading of those particular pests without any do it, without doing physical damage to the surface. Mm -hmm. Obviously we all know that chafer grubs and leather jackets graze on the roots, so inevitably they have an impact on the surface. But in a lot of cases it isn't actually the larvae that are causing the problem, it's actually the thing that wants to eat the larvae that comes and causes the problems. Now obviously if Mr Badger decides to come and look for uh, larvae, he makes an awful mess. Uh, but likewise, you know, all, a number of different bird species will come and graze for those. So th the issue to me is if your problem is actually that you have a high enough population of larvae that it's doing physical damage to your turf, you then need to look at some sort of solution for that. Uh, part of that is obviously getting as much air as you can into the soil, as much nutrition as you can into the soil, and encouraging the plants to actually regenerate as much root as possible. So it's about that cultural and nutritional technique. Um, a number of companies are looking at other solutions. Um, if you look at the pesticide registration site, there are only two active ingredients that are registered for managed amenity turf in terms of insecticides. Uh, one of which has a five day exclusion period so that probably means in most situations within amenity that isn't practical and it has a very limited um, disease uh, spectrum. And you mean you can't walk so on it for five days? That's what it says on the label yeah. is that you should... Uh, that the reason for that is that under the exposure model uh, there potentially somebody could pick up material and hence that's been a restriction that's written into the label. Mm -hmm. The other option is uh, the garlic extract that has been registered for nematode control uh, but it does have some insecticidal activity. So certainly at Rigby's we've been looking at using that window because we're legally we're allowed to apply the product and looking at whether we can actually manage the populations. And that work is very much ongoing. I would say it's not a solution, but we have had some interesting results where we've been able to suppress populations uh, of chafers and of leather jackets. But it isn't the answer. It isn't a revenge treatment like some of uh, the materials that people have been used to using. Mm -hmm. So we all need to be looking at more work. Some of the other interesting aspects is if birds are your problem, then maybe there are some cultural things that we ought to look at. Um, an interesting observation that we had at two sites this year was, this was with Schaefer's, that um, basically the birds completely dug up the surrounds to the greens, uh, with the exception of where there was clover. And because actually there was clover there, and the bugs don't eat the, the roots, and the birds actually physically have to scrap the soil, they weren't able to break the turf. So you still had, where there was clover, you still actually had a turf in place. Mm -hmm. But that creates other issues because obviously generally you don't want clovers. So we're looking at using microclover and seeing whether actually there's a cultural way that we can introduce that into a target area because particularly with chafers, they always come back to the same place in general. Yeah. So if you have a, an area where you know you get a problem, the chances are you're going to get that problem year on year. So maybe there are some cultural bits that you can do to help keep the turf integrity. But I'd love to say we've got an answer. I don't think any of us have got an exact answer, but yeah. we are trying to find ways yeah. to manage and work within what we're allowed to do.